chocolate, ice cream, sugar. Desserts are as popular as ever in British restaurants, hotels and gastropubs. The Great British Bake Off has shown UK consumers are intrigued by the secrets of pastry. Meanwhile, the Kings of Pastry movie and the support of Team UK at last month's World Pastry Cup in Lyon shows there is interest in the industry too. Yet employers often say it's difficult to fill pastry chef vacancies. So, is a career in pastry as valued in the UK as it is elsewhere? Big Hospitality went to Lyon to find out. We began by asking if it was simply the case that the Brits just aren't as good as the French. In France, pastry is French. Everywhere in the world we have, past we have, we have pastry. Uh, in China, you, can, you have the cult of dessert. But France is the cult of dessert. And I think now in France, many people French guys go everywhere in the world and explain what is dessert in France and many people are interested by, by this. Andrew Gravett is the UK pastry chef for leading French chocolate fair Valrhona. He thinks it isn't a case of not being as good, UK chefs just tend to be trained in the British tradition, although most jobs involve using French techniques. When it comes to showpieces, forget it. When it comes to knowing how to make a dessert, knowing how to make a chocolate cake, knowing how to make a, an ice cream, the English are as good as anyone. Um, but then that only we're only using that within the restaurants, within the hotels. We're not, we haven't actually got any pastry shops as we have in France. Back at a training session at Le Cordon Bleu London, UK team president and former executive pastry chef at Savoy, Martin Schiffers, said UK pastry chefs did not get the recognition and respect for the artistic and specialist nature of the job like their peers in both France and developing pastry nations like Japan and South Korea. A lot of hotels in Asia, they have a pastry shop, a retail shop within their, within their hotel. Now, most of the hotels I've worked in, you know, in Korea, I had actually three deli shops that I looked after, and they were part of two hotels that I also managed. Um, and that's something that's missing in the UK, that the hotels, they don't have a pastry boutique or, you know, and I think, you know, in France they do with, you know, the Plaza d'Affany, um, you know, it's become quite famous and, you know, they're promoting the pastry chef with that boutique and, you know, it, it, he's quite a famous guy. Many pastry chefs bemoan the lack of name recognition they get in the UK restaurant industry, with the biggest chocolatiers and patissiers working day to day in the leading restaurants remaining relatively unknown, while kitchen chefs take the credit on TV for their pastry chefs' creations. However, Valrhona's Frederick Bau said surprisingly that the situation is not so different in France. The cooks, they are, most of them, they are the big master, and they want to be the chef. And many, many times, the pastry chef, we don't know who's who, where is he, his name, and uh, on the menu, most of the restaurant are using the chef, are showing the name of the executive chef, but the pastry chef, very, very rare. Benoit Blanc, pastry chef at Raymond Blanc's Le Manoir au Cat Saison, helped develop the UK's entry to the World Pastry Cup. His boss told me pastry chefs needed a higher media profile, and competitions, like the World Pastry Cup, would help inspire the younger generation. The patisserie is an extraordinary craft, like cooking, uh, uh, it's but it's also of course very demanding in terms of hours, maybe a bit more hours, okay, rather than if you did work eight hours in an office, but it's so much more rewarding. It's, all, it's, about, it's not just a craft, it's about an art form as well. It's about creating shapes, tastes, textures, flavors. It's really a magician somehow. So I think there's so much more we can do, okay, in order to attract young people to this extraordinary uh, craft. One of the problems for employees is often not recruiting pastry chefs, but retaining them. Jules Renison is the president for Team USA, and he agreed. He argued more incentives, financial or the chance to open a solo establishment, could tempt chefs to remain in the industry. Well, what we see in America at the moment is we see a lot of young ladies going in the industry, a bit less gentlemen, a lot of young ladies. Uh, what is the challenge is they come in the industry, but do they stay? Working for a pastry chef or working anywhere in, a, in, a, in the industry should always lead to something big and better, or at least aspiration, you know. Gravit told me the key issue was training. Not enough colleges were willing to make the significant financial investment needed to teach high-end pure pastry skills. But the real problem was lack of valuable apprentice schemes and on-the-job training. Yes, apprenticeships are fantastic. It's very easy to say the teachers at the colleges don't train, but 
an apprentice an apprentice should be more time at at, at work in a, in a full time work. So it's more up to the employer to give them that training of and that knowledge that they need. And I think at the moment that doesn't happen enough. There are some hotels. Uh, Martin Schiffer, the chef who was at the Savoy, it was a perfect perfect example of how it should be done. He had a team of 25. He would enter them into into competitions. He would work very very hard with them, training them, teaching them, working past the hours that he should do to get his teams to give them knowledge. Um, and then there are other chefs who it's the complete opposite. You do what we say. You just do the list, and we're not going to train you anything. The UK team have rightly done the industry and the country proud, but in order to attract the next generation of chefs into pastry and competitions like this to help build pastry chef skills, leading voices in the sector are calling for action, including employer-led apprentice schemes. Peter Ruddick at the Coup de Monde de la Patisserie for Big Hospitality.